Hello there, welcome to the channel. My name is Yorkie and welcome to episode 8 of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione. The series where we go through each circuit, breaking it down corner by corner, giving you all the juicy knowledge, tips and information that you need to learn each track properly and improve your lap times. So if the series is of interest to you and you are new here, then please consider subscribing to the channel with the bell notification so you won't miss out on any future episodes. And if you want to support the channel further, you can find links to my social media pages down in the description below, as well as a link to my Discord server where it'll be awesome to have you come in and join the growing community. So for this eighth episode in the series, we are going to be looking at the Nürburgring GP circuit in Germany. The track's length is 3.2 miles, which equates to 5.15 kilometers and has about 15 corners around the circuit. The track demands medium to high downforce with medium suspension. And as you can see there, there are a number of key action areas around the circuit. Pretty much all of these turns listed is a potential overtaking opportunity if you have a run on an opponent. So make sure you take note of these for any potential attacking moves and also places where you may need to defend. As usual, we'll start off with the entrance to the pit lane, which will be just before the final corner. You'll be taking down the inside of that and you'll need to slow down to take the hairpin before accelerating a little bit before once again slowing down for the pit speed limiter online, which you'll find situated just here on the exit of the little block doff chicane that's there on the pit entry slip road. And you'll find the white line spanning the width of the circuit being accompanied by the pit in board with the speed limit marked on it as as well. As for the pit exit, you'll find the pit limiter disengage line basically right at the end of the pit lane barrier, where you accelerate out of the pit lane, staying to the right hand side of the white line that extends down towards turn one. And just as you're approaching this first corner coming out of the pit lane, you want to be braking just before you get to the white line that spans the width of the circuit. Under a normal racing lap, this is going to be our breaking point here for turn one. It's about 110 meters just before the 100 meter board there. If you wanted something a little bit safer, you can use the little kink that is in the pit exit line. That's also a good spot where you're going to be starting to brake rather heavily for that first corner and shifting down into first gear. The apex point is going to be just off the inside curb in the middle of the dip that is there. It's going to help you generate a little bit of extra mid corner grip and you want to ideally stay just off the inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions that can unsettle the car a little bit more than you would like. When it comes to the exit of the first corner, you don't necessarily need to run all the way out to the exit curb. If you do find yourself out there, you can use it in the dry conditions, but avoid it in the wet as it will hurt the traction. It's a serrated curb with some grass creep and then grass beyond it. But what you want to be doing is trying to get yourself back over to the right hand side of the track as soon as possible, ready for turn two. This is going to be our breaking point for the second corner. We're going to try and come out from a wide position as we can possibly get. Just a very short spurt on the brake, if at all. Hold the car in second gear and float the car in towards the apex. This is going to be the apex point that we are going to be looking for. It's going to be fairly late in the corner. We want to be coasting on through. It's a serrated curb on the inside, which we can use in the dry conditions. Be cautious of it in the wet. And one thing you definitely don't want to be doing is dipping a wheel beyond the curb itself. When coming out through the exit, we're going to track out wide. There's a serrated curb and some astroturf, which we can use no problem in the dry conditions. However, be very, very cautious and possibly avoid it entirely in the wet conditions. You'll also want to be careful of track limits out here as well. Just to play safe, it's better to keep two wheels within the white lines or at least touching the curb in order to avoid any risk of getting a penalty. Coming into the third corner, this is going to be our breaking point just before the AstroTurf ends on the right hand side of the circuit. It's going to be a fairly short braking zone. We're going to point the car pretty much straight in towards the inside curb and shifting down into first gear. We're going to hug the inside curb roughly apexing around this point. You can dip two wheels over the inside curb and use the grass creep that is there on the inside as well. Just make sure that you keep two wheels within the white lines of the circuit. Use this in the dry conditions take 
caution in the wet conditions but coming out through the exit of this third corner you want to be hugging as far to the left hand side as you possibly can as we're going to be transitioning pretty much immediately into turn four where there's going to be a straight after the corner so we want to open it up for ourselves as much as we possibly can into the apex of turn four we're going to try and get as close to this inside curb as we possibly can some cars will allow you to mount the inside curb and use a bit of the grass creep that is there on the inside no problem others that are a bit more aero sensitive and don't really like the bumps too much will appreciate it if you don't go and touch the curb and instead try and get as close as possible to it so after doing the work of opening the corner up for ourselves, we want to focus on a really good exit. You can track out nice and wide out here, although you want to be careful that you don't dip all four wheels over the white line, otherwise you'll get a track limits penalty or invalidate your lap time. There is a serrated curb with some AstroTurf on the exit, so in the dry conditions, use this to your heart's content and try and get that extra little bit of lap time. But in the wet conditions, do take caution when venturing out here. After a short little stroke, we should be on the right hand side of the circuit approaching turn five and this is going to be our breaking point just as the alternate layout goes off to the right. Open this turn up for yourself by dipping the two wheels over onto the cobblestones that are there on the right hand side of the circuit and turn into your apex clipping it around about mid corner in third gear. There is quite a bit of camber in this corner so use that to your advantage to help carry the speed through. You want to try and get as close to the inside curb as you possibly can but not actually touch it in either both the dry or wet conditions as it will unsettle the car. Coming out through the exit you don't want to track out too wide instead you want to try and hang towards the middle of the circuit and try and open up the following right hander as much as possible. So coming into the braking zone for turn six, we should be roughly around the middle of the track and we are going to begin our braking point at the start of the curving that is on the right hand side of the circuit there. We're going to turn the car in, we should be in either first or second gear depending on the car, whichever is more comfortable. Hooking up the apex around about here, just like the previous turn five, we want to be staying off the inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions, but it also has plenty of camber as well. So we we can use that to our advantage to help get us through the turn and accelerating away out towards the exit and down the hill towards turn seven. The exit curb of turn six is a smooth one with some green painted tarmac on the outside there. We can venture out here in the dry conditions to try and give ourselves a little bit of extra lap time and a better run going down the hill just be careful of the gravel on the outside there and in the wet conditions we'll want to be careful when venturing out here as this could cost us the traction and the run going down the hill towards turn seven. Coming into the braking zone for this hairpin, we're going to be braking about 20-30 meters just after the black concrete that is on the left hand side of the circuit. We're going to pretty much point the car straight towards the inside curb and we're going to be aiming for two apexes. The first is going to be just here at the start of the corner. We're going to let the car run a little bit deep but then bring it back in for a second apex where we're going to be hard on the throttle and trying to get a good run coming off the turn and up the hill. The corner has a fair amount of camber so we want to use that to our advantage and we want to stay off the inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions as that could unsettle the car. Coming out through the exit of turn 7 we once again got a smooth curb with some green painted tarmac on the outside there and gravel beyond it. We once again want to be venturing out here in the dry conditions to try and maximise the track's width and get ourselves the best possible run up the hill. You want to try and avoid going out here in the wet conditions as it could potentially cost you the traction trying to apply the power down as you're getting hard on the throttle. And then as you get towards the top of the hill we come into the Schumacher S's. There isn't really so much of a braking zone here, you just need to lift off as you turn into the corner, but try and maximise the track width upon the entry. Some cars may not like you dipping the outside wheels onto the kerb on the right hand side there, just as you're turning in. You want to avoid the kerb on the inside if possible. Once again, some cars may be fine with you taking it, but a lot of them will get unsettled in this high speed corner if you ride the kerb too aggressively. That's in both the dry and wet conditions. And then you immediately immediately transition into the right of the Michael Schumacher S where you want to try and take as much curb as you possibly can on the inside here without dipping the wheels onto the gravel. 
it will just help you minimize the length of the track and also help carry that speed through the corner and then coming out through the exit is once again a slope curve with green painted tarmac you don't necessarily need to run all the way out here or use it in both the dry and wet conditions but it is there available if you do need it Next up we have turn 10 where our breaking point is going to be just before the 100 meter board on the right hand side of the circuit there. There is also AstroTurf here on this right side which if you do dip your wheels onto do be careful of understeer as you are on the brakes and they may potentially lock up. But you want to be turning the car in and aiming for the apex just here on this inside curb. You can use it in the dry conditions, some cars will take it a little bit better than others. And then in the wet you want to be careful with the painted tarmac as it will become slippery. And then when coming off the turn, you want to run out towards the exit curb, not actually go out onto it. You don't want to quite venture out that far away because you want to bring the car back over to the left hand side of the circuit to try and open up turn 11. If you do venture out here though, you do have a slope curb with some painted tarmac and plenty of runoff. So having brought the car from the right hand side of the track back over to the left this is going to be our braking zone for turn 11 there's no real reference here you just needs a slight little bit of brake to help guide the car in towards the apex of the corner which is going to be just about here we don't want to be touching the inside curb or using that in neither the dry or wet conditions instead we're just going to be using the camber of the corner to help get us through and focusing on getting a smooth application of the throttle to try and get the best exit possible onto the back straight. To aid us with that in the dry conditions we're going to make full use of this slope curve with the green painted tarmac there on the outside. We want to be very careful with this in the wet conditions probably avoiding this exit curve entirely. You also obviously want to be careful with the gravel out there you don't want to be dipping your wheels out onto that as that will hurt our run coming off the corner. But then onto the back straight where we will come through turn 12 which is pretty much a flat out kink you do not need to worry about this in the dry conditions whatsoever just avoid running up onto the curb on the inside there and certainly avoid touching it in the wet you may need a slight lift or a breathe on the throttle coming through this turn in the wet conditions and then as you come out through the exit you don't really need to run out to the exit curb which is pretty much non-existent on the outside here it's just a strip of grass creek and you certainly don't want to be running out this wide in the wet conditions. Next up is the pretty fast and tricky chicane of turn 13 and 14. Our braking point starts just before the 50 meter board where we're getting hard on the brakes and then chucking the car in towards our first apex where we're going to lightly skim the first part of the curbing and then go and transition into the second apex where we're going to do exactly the same. On the inside of both apexes are two rather large curbs. You want to avoid these at pretty much all costs in all cars. Clipping these will very likely unsettle the car and pitch you into a spin. One bit of finer detail to note with these two apexes is the first total curb is a little bit closer to the main curbing than the second one is. That means you could take a little bit more of the second of the two apexes here in this chicane and carry a little bit more speed coming out through the exit. Coming off the exit of the chicane we meet this curb on the outside here which has a smooth slope up to some cobblestones. You can in some cars rise up with two wheels onto this curb, other cars may not necessarily like it and it may bounce and unsettle the car. And then we are into the final turn on the circuit. This is going to be our breaking point roughly around here, there's no real reference it's just a case of doing it by feel but we're going to get hard on the brake shift down into second gear first gear for some cars and you're going to point the car pretty much at the inside curbing for a first early apex you then have the option of either trying to hug the inside curb all the way through the corner or run a tiny little bit deep and bring it back for a second late apex in and around here just after the barrier on the pit entry. You want to avoid running the inside curb if possible because it will unsettle the car in both the dry and also wet conditions. 
you want to get hard on the power coming out through the exit and then you want to make full use of the exit curbing where you've got a serrated curb with some green painted tarmac some astroturf just beyond it and then beyond that is the gravel you obviously don't want to go out as far as the gravel but venturing too far out wide here could potentially invalidate your lap time or lead to a track limits penalty you obviously also want to avoid running out here in the wet conditions as it will hurt the traction to the run to the start finish line so that's the breakdown of all the corners let's jump in the car and do a flying lap to piece it all together So having set a fairly solid lap here around the Nürburgring, I just want to finish the episode by saying that all the brake markers and apexes that you have seen here and the amount of curb use that you can use is going to depend on the car and conditions that you are obviously driving in. As I mentioned, you've got the dry versus the wet conditions and some curbs you can take in the wet, however other curbs you need to avoid or be cautious with. But obviously depending on the setup and also the actual car that you're driving, some cars handle curbs a little bit better some are able to brake a little bit harder and later than other cars as well. So please keep that in mind as you're lapping around the circuit and taking everything on board here. If you enjoyed the episode though, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. And as I mentioned, social media links and links to my Discord server are down in the description below. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. But until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.